Hello, dear Marining years. I am Ramesh and I conduct hydraulic training programs for various companies. For the benefit of uh, Marining years, I uploaded a crane package in Merchant Navy Decorated website. As many of you are aware, April 5th marks the National Maritime Day. To celebrate this significant day, Merchant Navy Decorated has announced that it is offering a discount on all courses. Just visit the website merchantnavydecoded.com and seize this opportunity to enhance your knowledge and be one up on your next ship. Make your seniors respect you, look up to you and get impressed. Take care. All the best. So, now we are going to see the common parts of a crane. So, this is that you also can see whether the, uh, the structures are in place because you know if these structures are, um, are, are um, thinned down or rusted and uh, thin, the whole crane is going to fall on somebody's head. Right? Okay. This is the stool. So, now next. I need to have a rotating part which is going to the which is going to be the one which is actually going from uh, picking up the container or the cargo from the starboard side putting it on the ship or picking the cargo from the ship and putting it ashore so which thing okay now you know common sense whenever you have something which is rotating and something which is not rotating I need to have a bearing so okay gentlemen now we get uh, go into more specifics i just showed you the common parts of a crane I, as i told you there are so many types of crane uh, let me remove this and now you see here let me make it bigger for you guys now what can you expect will be inside the machinery space of the electrohydraulic crane of course as i told you this is this particular crane you can see that I have an induction motor. So let me start marking this. I have an induction motor here. This induction motor is actually driving three pumps through a gearbox. So I am not showing the gearbox, but it is the gearbox. And three, three through a system of gears, this induction pump is driving three pumps simultaneously. Understood? So now you can have a look. So this is my induction motor, you see. Understood. And then it is driving three. Okay, gentlemen. So we are moving on to the next topic. The next topic is what are the type of pump we are using in cranes in the industry? Of course, this is a very challenging stuff. Too many types, too many makers, too many models, too much of fundamentals. But uh, you have to grasp the basic uh, <clears throat> fundamentals of the most popular types and uh, uh, so that you are in a better position to understand the working principle of the crane because how the crane works depends on what type of pump you use, what type of motor you use, hydraulic motor. So here you can see that I have a crane and I am going to organize, reorganize my entire stuff by the pumps, what type of pumps, right? What type of pumps? By construction, right? So, because of the tilt of the angle of the, because of the tilt of the swash plate, that means the swash plate has got tilted because of an angle, my pump is giving me a particular discharge rate is equal to Q is equal to say, again let us keep this 100 liters per minute. You see, now I have created a possibility to change the, change the angle of swash plate you see swash plate is at a maximum angle correct q is equal to say 100 liters per minute this is going to be controlled what type of control again we are going to have a subdivision of this to see what all type of controls are possible but Okay, gentlemen, so time to move on to the next topic and the next question I am going to ask is what are the type of motors which are used in crane? Now, we are going to again as we did for the pumps, we are going to do it in a very organized and systematic way and that being I am going to say by construction, by delivery, by direction and then we are going to look at some examples. Even who are sailing, very senior people are getting mixed up and they are probably not aware. I am putting in some oil say 100 liters of oil per minute obviously this oil is going back to the tank and the resultant is my shaft is rotating correct or not now when I am doing this as long as my 
oil inlet is 100 liters per minute, I cannot change the RPM of the shaft. I cannot see axial piston, right? Now watch very, very carefully. You see here. Watch very, very carefully the angle of the swatch plate. You see, it's become low speed. See, angle of the swatch plate is going to watch very carefully. It has changed. Speed has picked up. Correct? And it's picked up more. That means for three different angles, I have three different speeds. Arrow is telling me that it, this is, these two arrows are telling me that it is a motor. And this arrow is telling me that it is a variable speed hydraulic motor. Now we talk about who is going to move the source plate of that hydraulic motor. It can be with a hydraulic control. You see, hydraulic control. Correct. Or it will be a electronic control. So now you can see that this is the hydraulically controlled motor. On a cargo crane, I am going to show you some examples of multiple speed motor. See, on a cargo crane with hydraulic control. Multiple, I have these examples with me. Okay, you, know, you cannot rule out the possibility that I cannot have a hydraulic control uh, variable speed motor. They may be there, right? I have an example of this which I intend to show you. You see here, just to tie up your loose ends, right? I have a motor which is correct. So look here, variable speed motor. No, multiple speed motor, correct, this is a motor and you can see the drawing is here, almost the same thing, correct. So to pick up the, the basic common functions on a crane and then try to, of course, how a crane works, uh, how do you know how a crane works? The whole conceptual level understanding of a, how a crane works, what are the, what are the basic uh, uh, <coughs> principles on which this entire crane is going to deliver, what it is supposed to deliver is depicted in the symbolic form in a hydraulic circuit diagram for a crane. So, when you look at the hydraulic circuit diagram, you should be able to identify the components and be able to understand how the oil is flowing and what are the, what is the crane supposed to do? A few of the components will be doing a particular job, correct? I am going to open up or expose the example hydraulic circuit crane with uh, a hydraulic circuit diagram for a crane. Now, this is a three speed crane. And also three speed crane and uh, IHI crane, you can see that and we are going to understand what is this. So, you know, in the first instance, it looks very, very complicated, very, very tough. Pressure controlling device, also called a relief valve. Pressure limiting device, in this case, I call it as a relief valve. Understood? I am going to expose that component. The reversing in this particular crane is going to be done by a component called the direction control valve direction control work. This is where you say that I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 by 3 direction control work. 7 by 3. Anyway, just by talking 7 by 3 doesn't mean like no much. You might be able to impress somebody but that's it. It's just a jargon. Just a way of describing it. But you have to understand what is it doing. What that test called the rocking test which seems to be a, the big fashion nowadays. Every a guy, I mean, whom, whom, whom I am coming in touch with, sir, please explain to me what is rocking test. Why surveyors are like you no know, going berserk asking for rocking test? And this is the test which, like, you no know, 15 20 years back, nobody knew about and nobody was bothered. Uh, but rocking test seems to be the, the new favorite of uh, all the surveyors. And uh, so, that anyway, now let me tell you what is this rocking test, why people are doing, and then I will give you my opinion on rocking test, uh, which will be a bit shocking for all of you. Right, and the jib is in this completely vertical position, minimum jib angle position, minimum jib angle position. So, obviously, you will be the, if you look at this, this one, I am somewhere here, correct? The balance, balance. So, what I am going to do in a rocking test is I am going to take put a dial gauge here, right? Of course, this is like no generic, I am showing you. If your manual says where to put the dial gauge, you follow the manual because there are many ways of doing the same thing. But concept, concept, try to understand the concept what I am trying to tell you. So, I put a dial gauge here, correct. And then what you see is, I am going to drop the jib. 
right understand i am going to drop the jib from here 